Hello everybody and welcome to my video on a tree-free approach to regularity structures with a focus on the construction of the structure group. This is joint work with my supervisor in Leipzig, Professor Felix Otto, and another PhD student, Pablo Linares. Let me start right away with the problem. We consider the quasi-linear singular SPDE DTU minus A of U times Laplace U equals Xi, where Xi is a space-time white noise. First, I want to remind you what it means for an equation to be singular and why this is a singular equation. For this, consider the linear pendant to the nonlinear equation, which is just the stochastic heat equation. Assuming for a moment that the right hand side lives in the Hölder base of space C alpha minus 2, the solution V to the linear equation then has regularity alpha by classical Schauder theory. Here we equip space time with an appropriate Kano Karateodori metric. Since we cannot assume that the solution to the nonlinear equation has a better regularity than the solution to the linear equation, the best we can hope for is that U, which is the solution to the nonlinear equation, is again in the space C alpha. Then, under some Mild assumptions on the nonlinearity, also A composed with U lives in C alpha, and Laplace U again in C alpha minus 2. Hence, for this product to make sense, we need that the sum of these two exponents is positive, which is equivalent to alpha being larger than 1. However, the interesting case when Xi is space-time white noise in one spatial dimension corresponds to alpha being close to but less than 1 half. Hence, this product is ill-defined and it's not clear what the solution to this equation means. Luckily, Martin Heider showed us in 2014 how to deal with such singular equations with his theory of regularity structures. His idea was, very roughly speaking, to describe a solution locally by a generalized Taylor expansion. Generalized means that in this expansion, uh, we, we built this expansion not only by polynomials, but also by more general objects like distributions. One obtains then a solution by gluing together all these local expansions. A crucial characteristic of Taylor expansions is that they can be re-expanded, meaning that a Taylor expansion around uh, point X can be re-expanded around any other point Y. This property is also required in the theory of regularity structures and is taken care of by the structure group. I will now focus on the construction of the structure group. Our philosophy is to consider all nonlinearities A at once, and hence we see the solution U not only as a function of space and time, but also as a functional of the nonlinearity. For motivation, for a moment, forget about the PDE and consider this simpler ODE DTU equals A of U times Xi with homogeneous initial data. Then, although it seems that we only consider the homogeneous problem, we recover the whole solution manifold by simply shifting the nonlinearity. More precisely, consider a solution U to this ODE with nonlinearity shifted by a constant U0, and this whole function add again u0. Then this whole expression here denoted by u tilde solves the ODE with nonlinearity a, but taking initial value u0. In the same way, we are even able to recenter. Namely, consider again the solution u to this ODE with a shifted nonlinearity, but this time the shift is allowed to depend on the nonlinearity itself. Then we again recover a solution to the ODE with nonlinearity A, but for a suitable choice of shift, taking initial value zero at time one. This kind of recentering is now what we want to implement on the level of the PDE. However, as opposed to the ODE, the solution manifold for the PDE is infinite dimensional. Therefore, we think of the solution manifold as being parameterized by space-time polynomials P, and we see the solution U as a functional of both the nonlinearity A and the space time parametrization P. As for the ODE, the constant part of the polynomial can be encoded in the nonlinearity by a simple shift, and therefore we consider only polynomials that vanish at the origin. Now we are ready to describe the building blocks for on what the structure group is based on. Namely, we start with the map that shifts the nonlinearity 
and keeps the polynomial fixed. Um, lifting this map to the space of all functions on pairs AP, we consider its infinitesimal generator and denote it by D0. Next, we consider the map that keeps the nonlinearity A fixed, but tilts the polynomial P by a space time monomial. Again, lifting to the space of all functions, we denote the infinitesimal generator of this action by dn, where n is now the pair n1 and 2 and should be different from zero because we want this polynomial here to vanish at the origin. Last, we have to consider a shift of space time, by which I mean we want to shift the polynomial by a space time vector. However, when we shift the polynomial, it does no longer vanish at the origin. Hence, we have to correct this by subtracting the correct value. To not lose any information, we make up for this by shifting the nonlinearity by the same value. Um, this gives rise to the infinitesimal generators partial one and partial two. However, as I told you before, for recentering, we also need a shift and tilt that depends on the nonlinearity, or in this case, on the pair AP itself. For this, let me first introduce some coordinate functionals. We denote the kth Taylor coefficient of A by set K and the nth Taylor coefficient of P by set N. This naturally leads to consider monomials in the variables set K and set N, and they are best denoted with the help of multi indices gamma. Doing then the construction of the generator for the shift of U space and the tilt by a polynomial again, but this time the shift parameter and the tilt parameters are allowed to depend on the pair AP, gives rise to the infinitesimal generator set gamma dn, where we now also include here n equals zero. Now, what do we do with these infinitesimal generators? Um, these building blocks, in fact, are derivations on an appropriate space, and therefore they naturally come with a Lie bracket and build a Lie algebra. The corresponding Lie group to this Lie algebra is then the structure group. However, we want to take a completely algebraic path to construct the structure group. Therefore, we first go from the Lie algebra to its universal enveloping algebra, which is just the tensor algebra factored by the Lie bracket. This basically means that we consider concatenation of elements of the Lie algebra factored by the Lie bracket. This universal enveloping algebra is also naturally a Hopf algebra, which means that it comes with a product, which is given by the concatenation of elements, and with a coproduct, which basically means that we are able to split a word into two. However, this is not the correct structure we, we want to work with, and we first have to dualize. Dualizing means basically that we consider the same elements, but we dualize the product to obtain a coproduct and vice versa. Then on this dual structure, finally, we obtain Hira's axioms, and therefore we can follow Hira's construction to the structure group, which is based on general Hopf theory. Now, what is the message that you should take home? First of all, we showed that the structure group arises naturally from actions on the pairs nonlinearity times polynomial, and we do not have to appeal to any combinatorics of trees. In fact, trees do not appear in our approach at all and are somehow replaced by multi indices. Why is this an advantage? because we can always translate the multi-index into a linear combination of trees, where the important thing is that it's a linear combination of trees. This means that the multi-index groups together a lot of trees. And this is in particular an advantage when it comes to renormalization, because then we have to deal with much less terms. Let me also mention that in case of semi-linear equations for which the theory of regularity structures was built, um, our structure and the corresponding one of Heide are compatible, meaning that there is a Hopf algebra morphism phi in between. This map phi, you can just think of translating a multi index into a linear combination of trees. And the nice thing here is that 
although the dictionary phi changes from one equation to another because the trees look different for different equations, the multi indices stay the same and the Hopf algebra morphism property persists. This shows that our approach is somehow quite universal. With that, I want to thank you for watching my video and I'm looking very much forward to take questions.